Hello, my name's Alfred Blake. I served with the Queen's Own Cameron Highlanders. We served in Korea in 1955. Then we went to Aden in 1956 or 57. Well, when we was on parade, I couldn't understand this uh, sergeant major called Ogilvy. And he's giving me all in Scottish, I kind of knew, and what do you do? And oh, I said, I had to say to my mate next to me, what's he talking about? I can't understand him. He said, just follow me and you'll be all right. And obviously I did and got through it. But after you've been there about a month, too much, you got used to it. You, st you started speaking Scottish. When I got home from leave, I was saying, OK, mum, I the new, and she, whatever's he talking about? And when we got off the trucks, I had to go up while the boys had a drink, you know, stretch their legs. And the uh, sergeant said to me, put a bullet up your breech. I said, you know, you know what that means? Bullet, load it up. I said, why is that? He said, you'll find out, it's gonna be dangerous. They called it bandit country. Well, thank you very much. We put our tents up and then we found out that the Yemeni fired us on every other night, taking pop shots at us to, to try and hit one of us, which they they didn't. So we had to build our, our bedding two foot down, so we was more or less level, ground level where we were sleeping, and the bullets used to go across the top and didn't hit us, no problem. And as we're walking up, on the, the uh, Dalla Pass, what they call the Dalla Pass, we see these enemy. We didn't know there was enemy, but obviously they were. All had rifles watching us. They was, as we're walking along, they're following us all the way. So we got to the, um, the Yemen border, had a good look around. No problem, no trouble. Major Grant said, right, we all had a drink. Right, let's all go back. We've done our patrol. On the way back, halfway back, open fired on us. I got hit three times, one in the foot, one in the knee, and one in the backside. My mate got shot in the back, the bullet went right through his back and blew his stomach out. He survived. A uh, boy in front of me died, the boy next to me died. Uh, I was laying there, and there's bullets flying everywhere. My mates was very good. They got round the rocks and open fired, and it quietened him down. I emptied my magazine, I couldn't reload. I couldn't get my magazine out of my pouch because my foot was killing me. And my knee and my back. And uh, I, I was shouting to my mates, come and get me, come and get me. One's gonna hit me, you know, and you know, hit me in the head somewhere. And we was, <laughs> they was telling me, keep quiet, keep quiet, get down, get your head down, we're, we're firing back. Within 20 minutes, they grabbed hold of me and took me round the rocks. I thought, thank God for that. I got out of it. And, but there was blood everywhere. And the blood, well, there was these ants everywhere. They were just going after the blood. Oh, it was terrible. Anyway, after the ambush, it all quietened down, but there was two guys in the platoon that had to run all the way back to the camp to get help. Now, they stripped off, no weapons, no nothing. They said, we're going, two of them, brilliant guys. And they run nonstop. It, it must have been about a mile and a half over the rocks, right to the camp. When they was, got to the camp, everything was up in arms. Oh, quick, everyone loaded up. Even the cook wanted to come out. No, you can't. You can't. Anyway, that, that was um, C Company. They come out and rescued us. And the only way they could get us down from the mountain was they put me on two rifles. I sat between the two rifles, and these two guys carried me literally down the mountain to this village. My mum uh, received a telegram to say that your son's been um, in an ambush, wounded. We don't know how severe, 
Luckily enough, I wasn't on life-threatening uh, injuries. So my mum was grateful for that, but she was still upset that I was wounded, being a national service man. Yeah, and that's when I got off the um, bus and I see my brother and my brother-in-law walking towards me. They didn't know it was me and I was all dressed in uniform. Christ, he's helped me. Yeah, I shook their hand and I said, where's mother? She said, she's on the landing. Of course, I'm shouting up at my mum. She's looking down at me, sisters and all that. Oh, they went mad. Oh, he's home, he's safe. I said, yeah, I'm home. Sat in the bath and I felt a lump there. I thought, oh, what's that? You know, if you worry about lumps and bumps. And of course, Val, your wife said, go up to the hospital and have x-ray, see what the lump is. And when they x-rayed it, the hospital told me, or the doctor said, there's a bullet in you, looks like, looks like a bullet. I said, oh, that's the one that was put there in 1956. There's the bullet they removed from me after 40 odd years, stuck in me backside. And the doctor said it will come to the service one day. By Christ, there it is. Well, when you come out of the army, you feel lost. You've got no friends around you. No friends that are good friends. In the army, you've got good friends. We all looked after one another. When I went in, I didn't want to go in. And when I was coming out, I didn't want to come out. I would do it all again. I would go back up there with all my mates, got, they've got to come with me, and we do it all again. Patrols, shot out, hospital, coming home, see me mum, do it all again, no problem.